so I can get to train at 4.30. That's good, that's what I need. Oh, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Willard Tupper. Um, I was born out west to here a ways, by, uh, kind of over by Forest Grove. It's called Dilly, Oregon. That was in uh, 1855. But um, I, I spent most of my adult life here around in uh, Hillsboro. And, and especially from 1902 on, I was one of Hillsboro's uh, rural mail, mail carriers. I was the route number two guy. Um, <clears throat> that was a tough, dirty, sometimes dangerous job. Uh, you know, many of the rural mail carriers, like myself, uh, when we went out on our routes, we needed to carry a gun because I had to protect uh, my horse or our team of horses or <clears throat> over the years, sometimes myself. But uh, that, that didn't happen a lot or it wasn't always a worry. But from about the 1890s on, things got uh, up to around when I passed away in the summer of 1916. Things were getting less frontier-like and it was getting a lot more civilized around here in Hillsboro, kind of like other parts of the country at that time. Um, I, I grew up uh, as part of a family of, there's seven of us, uh, well, seven besides me, and then mom and dad, but I just grew up as a farm kid out, out by uh, the, the Dilly area. And I don't know if I really noticed much changing then. It was later in, in later years when I'm a young adult around here that things just seemed to be really changing a lot. I mean, by 1900, a person could ride a train from New York City out to San Francisco in six days. And, and beyond that, heck, even faster than that, <clears throat> in 1908 or 1906, we had two competing electric train companies coming through here in Hillsboro, both coming out from Portland. People could ride and stop different places on the way here, head out, stop around town, different spots, and end up out in Forest Grove. Both lines went out there. and. Just, then they could hop back on the train. They could get on the other train and different company and come on back and stay out there. They, they had a lot of options. Um, I felt like that's what I, as a young adult living around here, started noticing. There was just more ways to do things, more more things to, to do. And those electric trains, um, heck, we called call them the red electrics. Those were besides the steam engine trains that we'd had here for a long time. So with that all going, there were just more people coming out this way, mainly by train, and it just seemed less and less like the frontier and just, you know, normal uh, city life. Uh, of course, my city life changed when 1888 I met the wonderful, uh, uh, lovely uh, Essie Stroud, and after some talking and courting, I got her to marry me. So then I started my new life in that way in Hillsboro, and eventually we raised a family. We had a son and a daughter, and, and then it hit me again too about. They just, they just so many other things they could do, options they had. I didn't have as a farm kid around out in, in Dilly. Um, by 1890, well, 1890 to 1915, this Hillsborough was just growing like a weed. I mean, we had over 2,000 people living here by 1915. And by when I passed away the summer of 1916, I mean, we're starting to push, people thought we'd hit 3,000, but um, in those years, um, with so many things, just there were so many things to do and, and see. Um, Essie and I, uh, we might choose to, particularly on a weekend, we could go and uh, jump on one of those red electrics or just walk over to the Main Street area and uh, yeah, go see a football game. We had our own football team before 1900 here. They didn't play a lot of games, and it was, that was a crazy game to watch, but uh, that was still one choice. Uh, I was more partial to the baseball games. By the early 1900s, 1901, two, we had a pretty accomplished baseball team here for, for many, many years. And, and if that wasn't our thing to do, we might choose to walk over to uh, the Opera House in uh, Hillsboro. Uh, that was up and going by 1895 or so, got to be pretty famous. I don't know why they called it an opera house, because we hardly ever, ever had any opera there. But we had we all had all kinds of other musical groups and singers come there. Uh, people coming in from Seattle uh, to perform, San Francisco, Chicago, Kansas City. Uh, wasn't just people from around here. So that, that was a nice option to, to have. For, for entertainment, gee, by 1906 or so, we actually in Hillsborough got one of those new fangled movie things. I mean, we had 
in 1905 or 6, we could just go a couple of blocks from the Opera House and walk over to the Arcade Movie House and watch those moving pictures. <clears throat> Essie just loved those. Uh, silent moving pictures, but it was just amazing to watch what would happen on those big screens. Stories about people from far, far away, other countries, and just kept us pretty darn amazed. Um, in that time period, uh, because I think the movie house, and then we got another movie theater years later, just became another draw for more and more people and businesses. And, and so, heck, by the early 1900s, we even had uh, automobile places, uh, new, those newfangled automobiles. I, I hated those things and I loved those things. Uh, they just <laughs> drove my horse team crazy for years to get adjusted to them. But by 1904 05, those were not super unusual to see around uh, Hillsboro. 1910 or 11, there's even more, but just provide a lot of hustle and bustle in, in this city. Of course, they never looked that good. I mean, that they weren't that well built and they were a lot smaller that, that early in time. But I got to where I loved them because I wanted to deliver the mail in that. I'd had it with horses. Let me get in that thing and, and drive around to deliver the mail. Well, I could really move right along until I got outside the city and then into the mud because those may look great, but you know, we didn't have any paved roads outside the city. So for two thirds of the time around Hillsboro, you know, you're not going to go anywhere in that and on muddy roads, the horse and buggy or my mail wagon, that was still a way to do it. Whether we were going to the movie house or going to see the opera, um, I, I like to stop by the Delta Drug Store. I mean, besides the medicines and our house goods, they always had ice cream you know, and, and more than one flavor <laughs> year round. I, how, how could you beat that? I mean, geez. Um, but truth be told, another draw for us that, that the dro Delta Drug, um, Drug Pharmacy, they had those newfangled telephones. It was, it was like magic. I, I mean, you go in there and they got this gizmo. It was a public phone because we didn't have a phone. I mean, hardly anybody had a phone in the early 1900s. You had to have some money to do that. Maybe like 1915, 40 families had a phone, and then every year more and more people got them because it got cheaper. But go in that drugstore and I plopped down, or Essie put down 15 cents, and we could call somebody if, if they had a phone. I mean, that'd be somebody we knew that had a phone, and we could maybe call out to Forest Grove or uh, Cornelius or call somebody we knew in uh, Portland or here in Hillsboro, but uh, still to be able to call anyone, that was that was that was something I mean for me it was I mean we could hear them instantly but it was I mean I can hear the words but I can hear I can feel what they're they're thinking you know they just had a baby and we're talking about that new nephew of mine or, or I can hear the fear in their voice because they're telling me about cholera sweeping through the state and you know they're terrified what what's gonna happen to their family or my nephew or niece gets on the phone and we're talking, but right that moment, and they're 800 miles away, I can tell they're, they're so prideful, they're so happy because they just want a blue ribbon at the, the county fair. There's, there, was, there was nothing like that for me. But um, I only got to see so many changes because summer of 1916, I, I passed away. And oddly enough, it, it wasn't something dangerous that happened out on my route. Uh, my uh, ticker gave out and it's so ironic, I had just finished 15 day vacation from work and then that that's when I uh, that was it for me I that was that was crazy but um, that's a story for another day <laughs>